Good morning. Would you believe it? The rain has stopped. We've had two and a half inches of rain in the last four days and it stopped for a day so I can get out and play. Now there's been a few comments about my short game, not just on YouTube but also with the guys I've been playing here, uh, playing here with at Gloucester. So uh, let's talk about my short game. Now the first thing to note is I use two clubs. I use the pitching wedge and the sand wedge. I want two clubs where there is at least 10 degrees of difference between them. One to go up, one to roll out. Now how do you get better at your short game? Well you use a facility like this. We've got this huge long putting and chipping green. It's absolutely ideal for different length chipping practice and your lag putting. So one thing you'll notice around Gloucester is there are a number of greens which are in excess of 30 yards long and if you've come up short you've got a long chip and run to a back flag so you've got to learn it and it's the same as if you just get on the green you then might have 80 feet of lag putting to do so you've got to use this to get better there's no shortcut so I'm going to put myself in a few scenarios, a few fake positions today as I go around and I'll tell you what I'm doing and hopefully I'll be actually be able to do it because there's no guarantee with the short game is it? You might hit a good one on, on the first and then hit a bad one on the second. Talking about the first, that's where we're going to start. See you in a mo. Well, let's start on the first on the bank on the right. I'm taking my pitching wedge because I want to hit the ball out, not up. And that's a pretty poor effort. That's left me a long downhill putt. So we'll give it another bash. And of course, bash is exactly what I do. And we steam it past. Not a great start, but as you can see, you can hit it an awful lot harder than you think you can. And by getting past the flag, at least the next putt is uphill. But I hope all my mistakes that you see me on this channel are up there on the right. I mean, as it happened, I hit the green in two, but this is about chipping, not hitting greens in two. And the reason I don't want to miss left is because it looks a bit like this. Right, let's move on. Our first lag of the day, all of 51 feet. And it's downhill and it's running away from me. And I can't quite remember the break on this. That's a bit of a tug, but we're inside the three foot zone. I always think of lagging as being hitting the ball to the hole and not trying to hold the thing and end up steaming it past. There's nothing worse than six or seven feet coming back. You want to hit the ball to the hole. And you can only learn this feel, this touch, by practice, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And occasionally, one of these will actually drop in. Right then, we've done ourselves proud here. We've short-sided ourselves on the third. We've got to come up over this bunker to this flag. And you can't really judge how far it is. So walk up and have a look. Go and have a look to see how much space you've got. It only takes a few seconds. Now the club I use for this is the sand wedge. And the reason I use the sand wedge, I want this. I want the bounce. This helps me get it out the rough just the same way as it will help me get it out of a bunker. It's also more forgiving. I can hit behind the ball and still make decent contact. But I've got a 60 or a 64 with four degrees of bounce and a razor edge for a leading edge. If I'm a little fat, it just sticks in the ground. Your ball's going in this bunker. 
Talking about going in this bunker, if I was to offer you 10 or 12 feet past this flag, would you take it? Now, if you try and get cute, so if, I, if you play for 12 feet past the flag, and you hit it poorly, because it's, we're in the rough here, you hit it and it's a, it comes out a little dead, guess where it finishes? It finishes 12 feet short of your target, which is at the flag. If I'm aiming for the flag, so I'm going, my plan is to land short of the flag, and roll up to the flag, if I duff it, especially with a 60, it's going in here. So to increase my bounce, to increase my chances of success, what I will do is just open the face of fraction. So I'm going to turn it into a 60, but what I'm actually doing is adding more bounce to give myself more help to get over this thing. So 10 or 12 feet past the flag, we'll see how we do. Well, there's some honesty for you. Well, there you go. Honesty on the channel. Well, one of the features of Gloucester are these things. Leylandi. They're put in to protect tees and greens from wayward balls and if you've ever seen somebody hit in the face by a ball that was struck no more than a hundred yards away you'll know why they're here. They're not very pretty but they're here to do a job. But if you get under them you end up sat on this stuff. Now I'm not entirely sure how to play off that stuff because it's so loose now it's a loose impediment so you can move some around just as long as you don't move the ball. But if you can't clear the stuff at the golf ball for fear of moving it, what's the point of moving any of it? The only thing I can think of is straight face club, back of the stance, stand very still and make sure you get that damn golf ball first. We'll give it a go just for a laugh. So you can see how difficult that is. You have to catch the ball first. If you catch this stuff first, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna build up a huge amount of material between the club and the ball, and you're gonna move it a foot. I've knocked that down to 15 feet. If you were stuck in here and you could get it to 15 feet, you wouldn't complain, would you? Imagine this flag is much closer to the edge of the green. How are we going to get close to a flag at the edge of the green? We'll land it in the rough. We hit it quite firmly with the pitching wedge and we use the rough to take the speed out of it and then it dribbles onto the green. It's a shot I play an awful lot. Now if we want to go a little further then we just hit it a little bit harder. Same low flight but with more run out. And if we need to go a little further, then we hit it harder again. Landing in the rough. Another chip and run with the pitching wedge. Now I've got to be aware of the break, but I've also got to be aware of what I want for a putt for me par. 
So I always try and finish on the low side. Then I got two and a half to four feet up the hill, which is a lot easier than down the hill. And then back to lagging again. Here we are on the ninth. It's downhill, it's right to left. And I'm looking to put this to the hole. And as I said, the only way you can get feel for these kind of shots is to actually practice them. Go out on the course in the evening, drop a ball, or two or three balls, at the side of the green, a long way from the flag, and just do it. Right, another problem. We've missed a tenth to the right. That'd be very easy just to take the sand wedge and flop it up here. But we got a tree right above our head. So there's no sand wedge or lob wedge answer to this. I got a nine iron. I'm going to hit it firmly into the bank and then it'll jump up and onto the green. But I haven't played this shot in at least 12 years so give me a tiny bit of leeway if it goes rock. That one hit a little bit high on the bank, so it's probably gone to the far side of the green. Let's try another one and see if I can hit it about halfway up. I just hope the camera's in the right place so you could actually see what the ball was doing. Sometimes you play beautiful shots with a wonderfully crafted irons and sometimes you're clunking the ball with a lump of steel basically and that's all you got to do to get up here. Thump it into the bank, have it jump up onto the green, take your two putts. I mean let's face it you're not getting par from here unless you're very lucky. Yeah, this bank is a fair bit steeper than it shows on camera. Now the first ball has finished up by my bag, so that's going to be a bogey. Second ball is about six feet left. Chance of a par. So my choice of clubs, sand wedge and a pitching wedge. And when I want more roll, then I can go 9-iron or 8-iron instead of the pitching wedge. So why don't I use my gap wedge? Why don't I use, instead of having the wedge and the sand wedge, why am I using this gap wedge in the middle? Well, I've only got enough time to perfect a small number of clubs. So if I use the one in the middle, is that going to fly high and stop? Or is it going to fly, high, fly, fly low and roll? I'm not sure. And because there's indecision, because there is doubt, I leave it in the bag. So it's wedge and sand wedge. I know what I'm getting at with sand wedge. I know what I'm getting at my pitching wedge. The one in the middle, not so sure. We've made it up to 11. Now the 11th green has got a fair bit of slope on it from back to front. And of course, because it's soft, it's not going to roll down there for me, is it? What I'm looking for when I chip on this green from the side, I mean, from short of it, it's fine, you're just chipping up. But when you've actually made it up here but missed it right or left, what I'm looking to do is to hit this ball about 12 to 15 feet left of the flag, get the ball pin high 
and then let it roll down 12 or 15 feet. Now it'll certainly do that in the summer, but here in April, after eight weeks of solid rain, it might not do it for me. But I'm gonna chip over there to the flag that's behind you. Well, I haven't been a member here for a few years. So this is not going to be as good as I would prefer. But you can see just how high I have to hit this ball when the greens are soft and wet. That one was short. It's about getting used to what the bounce is doing on the green. How much speed am I losing when the ball actually lands? See how high I'm hitting this and yet it still comes down a good three and a half feet past the flag. Now in the summer when this is dry I could be hitting this as high as the fringe. You see how it gets to the top of the arc, stops going forwards and then goes sideways and down the hill. And I got 50% out of this correct, 50% wrong. Well, I hope that's come out all right. And I hope it showed you the difference between being afraid of it and dollying it, coming up short and having an incredibly difficult putt, and then actually hitting it firm enough across this slope to reach the flag. And I got two out of the four to four feet. So I've got two pars and probably two bogeys. Well, this is the relatively new green. This is the new 12th and I've never done this before. So I'm going with nine iron and giving it a good wallop, very low and driven. So it will chase up that hill. And strangely, the two that I do with the camera behind me were better than the ones I do next when I put the camera behind the flag. This is something that I will have to learn and the only way you can learn it is to do it. A little short. A little short again. Yeah, the first two I did were up within four or five feet. You know, if you've got an awkward green on the golf course, even if the flag isn't in its awkward position, you can always practice to that awkward position. Just come out in the evening when it's quiet, practice a few of these, at least what I'm doing here doesn't create pitch marks. Now you may have noticed that most of what I'm doing is a chip and run. And that's because of the size of Gloucester's greens. This is where I learned to do it. You know, I go to other courses with smaller greens and I'm putting a sand wedge in my hand to play more or less the same shot, but just a much shorter version of it. I'm playing eight and 10 yard chips instead of 25, 35 yard chips. So you can see there's a slight difference there, but just for you, 30 yards, approximately sand wedge. So about four feet with the sand wedge you've obviously got to throw it further because it's not going to run out. Now the one thing I would say is choice of golf ball. I choose a golf ball that I like to chip and putt with. So that's the Pro V1, perhaps one or two of the other premium balls because what I'd like to see is bounce, check, roll out. If I was to put a top flight in my hand it's going to go bounce, bounce, bounce and I would have to readjust all of my distances. Now one thing is I find is important in this game. The shorter the swing you can make, 
the better it will be. The more accurate you will be, the more that you can repeat it. You know, the one foot putt with a very short movement is much easier to perfect than the 70 foot putt where there's a huge movement. And it goes the same with chipping and pitching, whatever terminology you want to use. If I put loft in my hand, I've got to make a longer swing. I'm going to be less accurate. That's my theory anyway. Well, the next question is, is what do you do on a short one? I know lots of guys who very successfully putt from 12, 15, even 20 feet from off a green. They're good at it. They know what they're doing. I don't. So I stick to what I know. So for a short one, I'm going to go move me. I'm going to go with me sandwich. Oh God, I'm gagging for a drink. One thing that's important to me is that you see me do this once. That I'm not showing you my eighth go at trying to hit this close. That's why there's no cut in it. So we're down to a foot. That's what I do well. Because I always chip from off the green, I'm good at it. If you always putt from off the green, there's no doubt you'd be good at that too. What you do the most often, you do well, don't you? I chip. Number 16. The shortest par three on the course, the easiest hole on the course. Always has been, always will be. Look at this vast green you've got to hit. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is, if you miss it, you're in some real bother. Yeah, if you miss it, you're in this trench. Now you get three different lies. You get the one that trickles halfway down this slope. You get the one that is actually in the flat. You get the one that hits this bank, shoots across, and it finishes on that bank. I brought two clubs, a sand wedge and a six iron. So this first one is a matter of getting your feet and getting yourself comfortable and making sure your legs out the way so you can make a swing. This will go straight up and stop on a dime. So hit it hard enough to actually reach the flag. This is fairly standard. Ball about the middle of the stance. Open the face a fraction to increase the bounce. And up we go. Both of those are pretty stiff. Now this, I think I've got the wrong club. I've used the putter here in the past to do this. It's a question of thumping it down hard to where my left foot is so that it will actually bounce up the bank. That's a fail. Well, that one didn't come out. The idea is with that one is you thump it into the flat at the bottom, which then makes it jump up and I missed the bottom. So whilst this is the easiest hole on the golf course, don't miss it. Well, we're almost done now, almost the end of the video. Just got to go down 18 here, all the way to the bottom for the last shot. And there's a story behind my last shot. And it's a bit of a long one, so bear with me. My dad died young, he was 69. Stomach cancer followed by bowel cancer. And I was only 39. And I wasn't really ready for it. Who is? But I was too young for it, just the same as my dad being too young to, uh, to leave us. My friend Roger, who was about 17 or 18 years older than me, rest his soul, because he's gone now too, he looked after me for a year or so. Now, because he was that sort of guy, he was just one of the best out of the top draw. Wonderful, wonderful man. Now, as the spring continues and we get some dry weather, you'll see me driving much further down this hill. 
and if I get it in the right place when it is really dry I can get to the bottom but I'm gonna go down here and play one of Roger's favorite shots from 50 yards short of the green I bet you can't guess what it is next video should be a playing video um, not sure what it's going to be yet depends what the damn weather does catch you later let's see you down there first well we've made our way down We've got 61 yards to the flag what did Roger take putter this one's for you pal Yeah, that might need a little bit of work. Ta-ra! Well, I don't know how he did it. I think I'll stick to um, hitting a pitching wedge. <laughs> 